This has got to be a joke. It's a joke, right? It's a joke. Hi, I'm Lisa, the artist behind La Cree Fine Art. You guys have been asking for this review forever. So today I am going to be reviewing the Holbein colored pencils. I'm also gonna need you to share this video. I need as many views as I can get because I need to pay for the pencils I can't use in my own artwork. And there's your spoiler. But believe it or not, they're not all bad. So let's go ahead and get into this. You need to keep in mind, I'm coming at this from a very specific angle. I am a professional artist. I expect a lot from my pencils in their performance and light fast ratings. I want my work to look more like a photograph. So if you are an artist who works in a more cartoony, more stylized look, or if you work in coloring books, if you're a coloring book artist, if you're a crafter, you may not be concerned with the same things that I'm concerned with. So just keep that in mind as I, I talk about the performance and the things that, that matter to me. Last week, I ordered about 50 of these pencils open stock. I went through their star rating. Now, the Light Fest was always my, my concern with these pencils. My biggest concern were the Light Fest ratings, well, that and the cost, but the Light Fest ratings were questionable. The information that Holbein claims on their pencils is that they are very light fast and they've got a three star rating. The problem was I couldn't find exactly what those stars correlated to on the blue wool or ASTM scale. So let's just back this up a bit. If you are unfamiliar with light fast ratings, when it comes to art supplies, it's not even just art supplies, any textile, it, it could be fabric, anything. The blue wool scale is going to determine how long a color will hold its color before it starts to fade when exposed to light. These ratings count under museum, what is it, how do they word it, museum standards, museum, something like that. So basically not direct sunlight. You're not gonna put it in your window. You don't want direct light hitting it. You don't want it outside. Now the problem is there are some colors that will fade in less than a year, two years, three years. So if you're a professional artist and you did this beautiful piece, you put in weeks or months into this piece, it's amazing, and you sell it, you're obviously not gonna sell it for pennies because it takes a lot. Colored pencil's a very slow medium. So you sell that work, that buyer's gonna be pretty upset with you in a few years when those pinks disappear. They just don't show up anymore when some of the purple, some of the blues, some of the greens even, you know, when some of these colors just kind of disappear or fade, they're going to be mad at you. You do not want that reputation. And I want my work to last. So if I were to work in a medium, like you guys know, I love ink tents. I actually did the artwork for the tin of the ink tents, pencils and blocks. If I work in ink tents, ink tents is a fast medium. I can get a project done in one or two nights max. I mean, you know, that is fast. That same level of detail, that same, you know, level of color saturation is going to take me weeks to a lot longer in colored pencil. So I can't really afford to not have light fast pencils with colored pencil with ink tents. I sell prints. I do not sell the originals because I don't, you know, there are some questionable colors there with the light fastness but it's a fast medium and it's a fun medium. It's a blast to work in. So I just don't sell the work. I'm okay with selling prints of that. With colored pencil, it is too slow. It takes me forever. And so I wanna be able to sell that work. So the light fast, being light fast is very, very important to me. So I figured going into this, let's, I just went through the pencils that were on Blick and I looked at the star rating and I only bought pencils that were rated two or three stars. I did not purchase any one star pencils. Now I wasn't positive what that was going to correlate to with the blue wool or ASTM scale because I could not find information on that anywhere. So I went ahead and decided, you know what? I'll just contact Holbein directly and see what they can get, what information they can give us. And this is where the joke starts. So I reached out, I messaged them directly through their website and wrote, hello, I just purchased a bunch of your colored pencils. I see that they have a three star rating for light fastness. Can you tell me exactly what these numbers correlate to, to either the ASTM or blue wool scale? Thank you. Now ASTM and blue wool, these are your industry standard. That's it. There is no really other way of telling me how light fast it is. So you get some of those brands, the cheap stuff that like Arteza and all that crap, and they'll be like, yeah, excellent light fastness, but they didn't act, they didn't do genuine light fast testing. It's kind of a like, like everyone's saying everything's organic. What does organic mean to you? Cause it might not mean the same. Like you have a lot of people that are, they make claims without being able to back those claims. So I wanted to know what your information is here. So right away I get an email back. And so I was impressed. I'm like, wow, this is really a great response. Maybe these are going to be good. Maybe this whole outcome, like maybe we found a pencil that's that, that will be awesome. Something new, something different. That's cool. 
Hmm. Um, so I get an email back from Matt Hopper who writes, Lisa, thank you for contacting Holbein Artist Materials. Holbein tests and rates their own star rating system for all of its 19 color lines. Wait, all of your own star rating for airbrush paint too? Huh. I don't know if I'm comfortable with that. I didn't realize. I mean, with airbrush paint, with, with acrylics and oils, it's the light fast thing's not as big of a deal because those aren't as, you don't have as many fugitive colors that are as prone to, to fading with those materials, but still, that was kind of a, hmm, can you hear my dark frog in the back? Um, they're talking. Anyway. He says, each star represents roughly 25 years of undisturbed durability under typical conditions. In this case, the six Holbein colored pencils, HOCP luminance colors, carry a no star rating as they are labeled as not durable, where many other are rated as three star. Absolutely permanent. I can't make enough air quotes at this point. Um, please reference the attached digital color chart and tech data sheet for relevant color information and characteristic breakdown. Happy creating, reach out anytime. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with Holbein related questions, signed Matt. Okay, so, and he gave me a chart, a color chart that was really, really helpful because I was actually, it was kind of a pain to go through and figure out which individual pencils were on Blick's website. So this was great. That was very helpful. According to them, only 18 pencils in their entire line of 150 really wouldn't be considered light pass. It's not bad. And I'm, I was kind of hopeful. I'm like, okay, this, this could be good. So my response to him, because I still wasn't, I just wanted to make sure we had everything cleared up before I made this video. This is really helpful, thank you. Just to make sure I completely understand, one star would be around 25 years, two star around 50, and three star around 75 years before fading would occur. Also, can you tell me what method was used to test this? Now, just to give you a little background information on testing for light fastness, companies like Faber-Castell or Derwent, they use a very scientific method with specific lighting conditions like machines are involved to make sure it is even that these tests are, it is an expensive test to do. They're gonna be certain with those results, whereas some companies may do a, where they kind of do an eyeball test, it's a almost a DIY blue wool test where you would put out your color samples and then you'd have your control. You put the color samples in a window, in a south facing window for about four months during the summer and then you just kind of eyeball about how much it faded. So not as scientific, helpful, but not as scientific as when you use these really expensive testing processes. And that's what I wanted to know. I want to know how much can I trust the results you're giving me. I was certainly concerned about the star rating that he gave me because a lot of the pencils that they're saying are two star, which he says should last about 50 years. And that about concerns me too, but it lasts about 50 years. We know those colors are very fugitive. They are impossible at this point. I don't know of any company who's been able to make those in a light fast color. They would typically be colors that would fade within two, three years, if that, I mean, really bad light fastness. And they've got some of these set as being a one or a two star, meaning it should last 25 to 50 years. But those colors never last that long in colored pencils. Like there are just, and that's not anything against like companies who can't make them light fast. It's not that they're cheaping out. It's, there are just certain pigments in colored pencil form. They have not managed to make light fast at this point. So no judgment there. My question is, you're telling me that colors that we know are typically not managing to reach that level of light fastness, you're saying yours did but I don't think they would have. Like I, that's where I started really, really going, mm, I'm not feeling too good about my purchase right now. Again, going back to, I'm a professional artist. My name is on the line when I sell a painting or drawing, I have to have it last. If that fades, I've got to replace that, refund it, something that's an issue. So again, I verified which star rating, one star 25 years, two star 50, three star 75, and asked which method was used to test his response. And he's, again, he's getting back to me right away. I was super impressed with the customer service. I'm thinking, wow, they really care about their customers. This is awesome. He said, yes, that is gener generally the rule. Obviously, circumstances will vary the reality as in location, proximity, and exposure to direct and indirect sunlight, or if the artwork has been mounted under UV glass, etc. I have an issue with that. Those conditions, while yes, it will affect how fast the color fades, we talked about that, 
that does not impact the light fast rating. The light fast rating is, is a standard that we use that would be, like I said before, it's considered under museum conditions, so indirect light. Your, wait, I don't understand why that's coming into your light fast ratings. None of that information should impact your light fast ratings at all. So now I'm even more nervous about my purchase. So we've got some colors that you're telling me are light fast and I'm thinking, I don't know. And yeah, so as far as how they test, Holbein's particular methods are proprietary, but done so with accordance to ACMI standard. <coughs> <coughs> I'm not, I'm not dying from the zombie virus. I'm choking on my own spit because I cannot believe he just said that to me. Propi what? What shape are the wheels on your car? We use proprietary shapes. You, you, there's an industry standard. You don't make it up. You can't, you, you did blue warrior's tamp. What, which did you do? Pick one, not invent one. Also, ACMI standards. That has to do with the toxicity ratings. Not once have I questioned toxicity ratings. I've been very clear throughout this. My questions are in relation to LightFast. So now are you, I don't, are you just throwing out letters and acronyms thinking that that's going to convince me? Oh, look, they're professional. They're great. They're, it's worth spending an arm and a leg and that's going to make it okay? I have questions. So I asked those questions. So I responded back, I said, the ACMI is just in relation to toxicity, correct? I'm more interested in the methods being trustworthy with the light fast ratings, which are normally done with ASTM or blue wool. I just wanna make sure I have a good understanding of all this information, thanks. I don't want to make a company look bad. I want them to make a quality product that they stand behind that us artists are excited to use. I feel I, like I'm just, I just, I still have questions. So he responds back, my apologies. I had meant to type ASTM, not ACMI. You are correct, however. ACMI is the governing body for material art material toxicity. Holbein manufactures according to those standards as well. You still haven't cleared up the ASTM or blue wool issue, have you? Like, I don't... So I emailed him right back. And this is all happening instantly. And there's a reason I keep bringing that up just to make sure I have this right. Again, I don't want them to look bad. I wanna give him every opportunity to clear this up for us. Because if I'm misunderstanding something, I wanna relay that to, you know, I want this to be very clear. Just to make sure I have this right, the colored pencils follow the ASTM D690, because ASTM can be other things, so I want to make sure I am as clear as possible right now. I've been saying light fast, but he seems to be confused on some of these, what these numbers and letters mean, so let's be clear. They follow the ASTM D690, one standard, but do not have ASTM ratings results to go with them? If a company goes through the trouble of testing these properly, it is expensive. So, but you're making it up. Oh, we just used our own. You can't just use your own. That's not how this works. So I sent that, that went, email went through at about 1.50 p.m. on Thursday. It is now Tuesday at 1.49 p.m. So, you know, pretty, that's kind of funny. Um, but it is, it's been days and I never heard back. He wrote me off. He's not getting, I didn't get it. Like I would understand if he was like, you know what? I don't know. Let me look into this for you. Let me ask someone else, whatever. Cause it is possible that the people in the marketing, the people, whoever it is you're talking to, it is absolutely possible. They just don't know. Sometimes they give artists misinformation. I've seen that happen with brands I really respect. So I get that. He should then have contacted somebody else or told me he would contact somebody else. No, he wrote me off. This is how they treat their customers. Cause he doesn't know I was doing a review on this. And I didn't, I was tempted to tell him to try to drag out as much information as I could get for us. But at the same time, I want to know how you're treating your, your just your regular customers. How are you treating artists? Not well. You apparently think that we should just accept the BS that you're feeding us and not question it apparently. Because when we question it, you're just not going to talk to us anymore. I'm now concerned because these are the methods they're using. He said on all 19 lines, I use their airbrush paints. Now I've been using Goldens more and more. I actually prefer Goldens. I like the bottle better is my main reason. Yeah, I won't buy their products anymore. None of them. I don't trust them. So I thought, you know, going into it and in practice, do I like these pencils? Let's try them out and see if they're any good. And if I like them, what, am, what is my reaction going to be? What would, what would I, where do I want to go with this? If the pencils are decent, do I want to 
trust what they're telling me as far as maybe just go with the three stars, that the three stars are all gonna be super light fast because that should be about, they seriously said that, about 75 years. Then I thought, well, maybe I'll do the blue wool scale or blue wool test myself. It's a DIY one. You can look up online how to do it yourself. You have your test you or your control and you have the one you put in the window and you see what those results are. Let's see if what they're telling me is pretty close to what results I'm finding. And then it clicked. I'm like, why am I doing that? CPSA, which is awesome, by the way, Colored Pencil Society of America. I'm going to put a link to their, I'm not like affiliated other than being a member. I'm going to put a link in the video description if you want to join there. It runs about $45 a year for your annual membership. I, I actually used to be a member. I let it lapse. I just forgot to renew it. And then I realized, you know what? I'm going to sign up again. I want to know what their results. So one of the really cool things that CPSA does is they do their own DIY, like I was telling you about, Blue Wolf test on all the colored pencils. I mean a lot of brands. Now I cannot tell you what those results are. It's only available to members and I am not going to violate that. One of the things that they've recently tested was from 2019, they tested the Holbein colored pencils. And what I can tell you, there are some serious discrepancies. Like things they're saying are three star under these blue wool tests are coming up as not at all light fast, do not use in your artwork. So you can't even trust their, 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 I don't know what they use to test. I have no idea what they're, even if they had done a DIY blue wool scale, that would have given us a better idea, but they can't tell me because they used a proprietary method to test. That's not a thing. You, you don't just make one up. There is an industry standard and it's, a, it's not just for art supplies. It's for every, all the textiles, all fabric, everything. We have a standard. I don't understand why you would make one up instead of just using the blue wool. This is what I'm getting from this. You want us to pay top dollar for a pencil that is substandard. Oh, I mean, all right, but I won't. But even if you liked the formula of their pencil, which isn't bad, and we're gonna talk about that because I kind of like it. Even if you like it, is it worth spending the money and risking your artwork? I, there's just, there are, there are cheaper alternatives. And I just am not, I, I don't get it, I guess. So moving on to performance, this is probably what more people are interested in who are not professional artists. They're interesting. They feel to me more like a colored pencil oil pastel hybrid. Very weird. We're, and we're gonna talk about this when we get into this project. When I, when I shifted the techniques that I used for these, they blended so well with OMS, like just that combination, burnishing, OMS, loved the results I was getting like and I started out hating them but the more I worked it was like these are really nice and that was so disappointing to to realize it doesn't matter I can't I can't trust them in my artwork now there are pencils in the, the group there are I don't know maybe I guess around 60% of the pencils would be rated light fast enough that it, I would be comfortable using those in my work unfortunately most of them the colors that were light fast I didn't love like wasn't super in love with the colors. Um, so there's that. My frogs are talking. The other thing that was amazing with these, I had no wood casing splitting and I had no breakage. So as soft and waxy feeling as they were, the pencils didn't really break. I had a couple when I had it really sharp, just the bare tip, but I mean, they really held up well. So that was a huge pro for these. They held up, they seem to be made very, very well. My, my only real issue is the light fastness and the company's vagueness on the information that they will give us. As artists, I can't, I can't do vague. I need actual information. I need to know that what I'm using is going to last because I sell this, that that's a big deal. Okay, let's go ahead and just jump into this project and we'll talk more about the pencil. So now we're gonna get into the good stuff and the stuff I really did like and give you guys some tips on if you have these pencils that might work well for you. If you are a member over on Patreon, make sure to head over where you've got the two hour version of this demonstration for you there. If you are unfamiliar with Patreon for as little as $4 a month, you get access to all of my longer tutorials. I have a new one every single week. And as soon as you sign up, you get instant access to over 200 of my past lessons. I will have a link in the video description, both to Patreon and to my video library. If you want to check out what I have available. So for this one, I used my Arches Hot Press watercolor paper. This is 100% cotton. I wanted to use my best paper when it comes to blending with OMS. 
for these pencils to make sure I was giving them a really fair chance. Now, when I started, I was working, as you can see here, in the lighter layers, little circles and ovals, getting that really smooth finish there. And I found out pretty quickly that was pointless. You don't need to with these pencils. You, they actually, I found work better with burnishing and mixing with odorless mineral spirits. Now I normally just do a lot of light layers and then mix with odorless mineral spirits. But in the case of these pencils, the light layers were not super useful. They start getting really slippery. It's almost like too much wax. They also had a decent amount of wax bloom. I've not experienced that since Prismacolor. Not the end of the world, a fixative would solve that when you were done with a piece. I just don't normally need to use a fixative, so there's that. Not really a pro or a con, just something you need to know if you're going to use these pencils. You will need to figure out what a good fixative for them will be. So here you can see I'm trying to layer, doing a lot of these light layers, and it, it just, it was kind of a waste of time. The light layers looked okay when I blended with OMS, but when I did the darker colors of light layers, that you just, I could not get my darks dark enough. And it was really frustrating. I'm thinking, oh my gosh, these are the cheapest and most terrible pencils ever until I figured out I just needed to change my technique on these and use them a little bit more like I typically would with an oil pastel where you just push harder, get a ton of pigment on there and then blend. And then I really liked them. Or at least I understood a bit more why so many artists did like them because there were a lot of reviews for over the last several years saying these are the best colored pencils out there. I didn't believe it. I'm thinking, no, probably not. And I still don't think they're the best by any stretch of the imagination, but I do get where for some people, these are very unique in the formula and the way that you layer them and the way that you use them. And I can understand why there are some people based on the style that they work in where these would be a great fit. So, so I, I have to say, I, I think I kind of get it. They are, you can be sloppy with them. I don't really know how else to word that. You can be very sloppy. Usually if I'm working, let's say with Faber-Castell Polychromos, I'm, there's a bit more finesse involved and keeping the pencil sharp and working in the light layers and, and the little circles and ovals and overlapping to make sure everything was smooth. And with these, I just didn't find that to be necessary. Actually, didn't even work. So here, you can really see. At this point, I figured out I can be sloppy as far as leaving it sketchy. Look at those really harsh straight lines. This is not typically how you're going to work with colored pencils. You're going to end up with something that looks like a scribbled mess, and that's essentially what I'm doing here. But by this point in the piece, I figured out I can scribble, and it will blend out really, really smooth. The problem I was having at this point was I was still trying to build up my darks in layers, and they just the the black pencil that I'm using there. And then there was another color right there called raisin. I actually really did like that raisin color. It's like this deep plum color. I could not get those dark enough building up in layers because it doesn't take layers. It's like, it's so waxy. And then they get, they just, the pencil's not gripping. Look at this as I'm blending with odorless mineral spirits. That's not what I wanted it to look like. If I had been using polychromos and got that many layers on there or that much pigment, it would have been a lot darker. And this is, was just not doing it for me. So I let it dry completely. And then I was like, you know what? Let's just try burnishing. I am scribbling the heck out of these, pushing really hard and the, the color, I'm getting what I wanted. And when I started getting into creating that bokeh look that you'll see in just a moment here, these pencils were wonderful for that. They just were very, very easy to get those circles and to get that out of focus look for the background. I definitely liked them better for the background than I did on the foreground. And that's where it's just disappointing that the, the light fast ratings are so poor because this is something I could use in my backgrounds. I did actually like the results that I got. But we all know how that ended. So here, look at how the colors show up, how I can take lighter colors, lighter pinks, lighter green, and it shows up so well. Blending again on that brush, that's odorless mineral spirits. I'm using Mona Lisa odorless mineral spirits. Gamsol works exactly the same, but it's supposed to be less, less toxic. I use Mona Lisa odorless mineral spirits for my, my oil painting, so I just have a big old gallon of it. It lasts forever, so that's why I just stick with that one. And now I'm really pushing hard. I'm holding the pencil to the side. That is not typically how we want to use colored pencil, but it worked. It was giving me really good results. I was starting to build up and get the look that I was going for. So that was definitely a huge bonus for me in this, but I had to change the way I looked. I don't feel, or well, not looked, how I worked. I don't feel that these are as versatile as, let's say, Derwent Lightfast or Caran d'Ache Luminance, Polychromos. I feel with those, I can do 
use more techniques and get a bigger variety of looks. With these, I did feel a little bit more limited. What they could do, they did well. But as far as when I started getting detail and such, I didn't love them for that. I felt like I was getting a little bit more of a, like my lines, I just couldn't get the teeny, teeny, tiny areas, teeny, tiny lines like I would like. So that was the negative there. But this was definitely, I would say, their strong point. They blended so smooth for that background. Once I started burnishing, as soon as I switched my technique, oh my gosh, I was like, these are, are great. So now I'm starting to get into the smaller detailed areas wasn't super in love. They weren't bad. They weren't my favorite. So you could, they worked okay. I was able to get an end result that I did like, but I certainly would have liked mixing these with polychromos or illuminants. And while I didn't mix these uh, or try them with my other pencils, because I wanted this project just to be this pencil itself, I do, they should work just fine if you have your other pencils. Um, so let's say you wanted to go ahead and buy the colors, you get the CPSA thing, see what colors you are comfortable with, or you do your own DIY light fast test, see what colors you're comfortable with. Of those, it's just over half, I would say I would be comfortable using. It's not maybe 60%, 58%. It's not a lot of pencils. But if you wanted to mix those with your other, let's say your polychromos or your Dorant Light Fast, I think then you would be okay as far as having it be archival. Now, another thing just to keep in mind, when if these companies are, they change their formula, that will change the light fast ratings. And if they're not telling you they change the formula and the light fast ratings change, that would be a bit of a concern too. And given the way this company has kind of handled stuff so far from what I've experienced, I'm just not, I'm, I won't be buying their products. But those are, are things that you've got to figure out what you as an artist are comfortable with. And if those are things that matter, depending, like, you know, I was mentioning earlier, if somebody was doing more cartoons or if they're not selling the work, then they may love these because you can get color down easily without having to use a light hand, without having to use those more refined techniques. I don't think it looks as nice as it does with the refined, refined techniques, but that doesn't mean you can't make something really pretty with these. Now, one of the things I really did like with these pencils, look how dark I will go on some of these areas, and especially as I move into the next section. I'm gonna just block everything in with really dark colors and then go on top with the lights. The light colors really showed up well on top of the darks here, and that I definitely love. I loved the, the opacity in some of these colors, and they were very odd because some colors weren't opaque at all, and the colors that I would have expected to be, and then other colors were super opaque. So, you know, you've got a, a big variety there. Now, if you were to get the entire set of these, they came with a ton of pastels, and I know a lot of people like that. As a professional artist, I don't personally see the draw. I always want more pinks and purples, but as far as like needing a really pastel color, you can give me a dark purple and I'm gonna add white to it and get whatever, you know, whatever value, whatever exact shade of purple that I want there. So I don't see the draw in having so many pastels. I think if you were a coloring book artist, then that would be a bonus. Somebody who is not mixing color on their own would probably like the variety of pastels. But if you are a professional artist and you've been working with colored pencil for a while, I don't think you're going to see, you, I imagine you'd be more like me where it's like, oh, I mean, I'm okay, but I don't need those either. I could have just mixed my own. So here I'm blocking in some of the darks first just to kind of map out where stuff goes. This was so busy. I had so much craziness going on. And they, the funny thing was when I tried layering these in light layers, they didn't layer well at all. Yet when I burnished and put a heavy, used a really heavy hand, I was able to get lots of layers then. It was the oddest. Like it's a very unique formula. That's for sure. Now, if they would have told me their formula was proprietary, that I would get. That I understand. Telling me the methods you use to determine if something's light fast. Not so much. So here, look how I'm just going to scribble and I'm scribbling everything. So super sloppy, but I'm scribbling in the darks and I can get these light colors and detail, well, semi details on top of it so easy. And it is so good. And here, when I start getting into more of the bokeh look, these pencils performed so well for that. And if you've been following me for very long, you know I use the bokeh look a lot. So that's the big selling point. I like that. I just wish the company was more transparent with the stuff as professional artists that we care about. 
look at with all that scribbling how smooth that really blends out fairly smooth for how sloppy my layers were so again blocking this in still being sloppy just getting those darks in and then once that dries i can come back on top and look how nicely these show up so i would not say that the whites and cream colors are as opaque as say karen dosh luminance or the derwent drawing but they are still fairly opaque they were they showed up I'll, a lot more than I thought they would. Now towards the end of the piece, I am going to, for my brightest, brightest shiny highlights, use my touch-up texture titanium white mixture like I typically do on colored pencil. That is not a knock whatsoever on the white pencils here. I think these pencils are great, but whenever I use colored pencil, I always want those brighter highlights and touch-up texture titanium white mixture. You cannot beat it for those really bright highlights. And then like using something like, let's say some people will try using acrylic paint, white acrylic paint or gel pens. Those are not archival. You're putting a water-based product on top of a wax and oil-based pencil. So that's why I use the touch-up texture titanium white mixture. But again, that's not to knock the opacity of these white pencils. They show up, as you can see here, very, very well. But I'm not able to get, like I have to push really hard. I'm not able to get really fine details with those. And I was pushing hard. I mean, pretty hard with a lot of these, these pencil strokes that I'm doing and they weren't breaking. I had a couple of just the barely t uh, the tip break, but not like all the way down the, the casing or the whole lead like you typically get with, let's say, Prismacolor. So I was really impressed. Another thing that I thought was really interesting, I intentionally sharpened these. I've got a pencil sharpener that I know needs to be replaced. It's breaking polychromos. If, if you're breaking a polychromos, that sharpener is bad. So it's just gotten dull. It used to be fine, but we're to that point where it's dull now needs to be replaced. I was curious how well these held up. And so the entire project, I was sharpening these with that bad pencil sharpener that it's dull, it's going to break leads. And I did not have it break a single pencil here. So that was, that was, that definitely goes in the pro column of these. They're very, very durable for how soft they are, which is unusual. And you can see now, like, I, I, there are so many po positives. It's not, I know the beginning of this video sounded like I absolutely hate these. I hate that I can't use them in my professional work. I, I can't trust, you know, there are a handful of colors I can use, but I'm just not going to give money to this company anymore, being that I don't feel they're being transparent in too much, too much information here. I mean... The, these are very, very expensive pencils. They are on the high end of our most commonly used pencils that we use professionally, yet they're not doing the testing that the professional companies use. They're not doing the, the, they're not, they're just not being open about stuff that as artists, we need them to be open about. It is just not acceptable to not tell us how you're testing for light bus ratings. And then to find out when private testing, you know, the DIY type blue wool scale testing was done that they weren't performing quite like the company claimed. So those are all very, it, it was, it's sad because I do kind of like, I mean, look at this, look at how easy I'm getting this bouquet look. I was so happy with those results. So in the end, I can't tell you what's right for you as an artist. You've got to figure out if you're comfortable with the lack of transparency and the way that, I mean, me, when I was asking questions and trying to get information, the way that I was just dismissed and I still haven't heard back from them, you've got to decide, is this a company that you're going to trust your artwork with? But what kind of artwork are you producing? If you have the money to spend on a pencil that is not going to be light fast, I kind of like the, the the performance here. They, they're they not my favorite. I certainly would put Polychromos, Derwent Luminance, and, or Derwent Luminance, that's not a thing. Karen Dosh Luminance and Derwent Lightfast, those 100% I like better. But I would like a pencil that was, you know, had di some different qualities. I like that. I like variety in my work. I work in multiple mediums, and this almost felt like a different medium, which was pretty cool. So you've got to You've got to decide what you're comfortable with and what your needs are. And given the price point and lack of transparency from that company, what works best for you? And I'm just building up. This was one of the areas around the eyes. The reference photo I have, this is of my tree frog. Um, that's murky. She has really cool detail in the photo. It was a macro photo of the lines inside her eyes. I couldn't get it. And so that was definitely in the negative side for me. I 
could have just switched to polychromos if I was doing a, a mixed pencil piece. So that would have been an option. But these pencils didn't get that teeny, teeny, tiny, fine line like I can get with some of the other pencils. So something to keep in mind there. And that's really the case for a lot of the moss that she's sitting on. It was one of those things where I was kind of like, well, it's not really getting more detail. That's just going to be good enough. But if I want a ton of detail, that this wouldn't be my go-to. If if these pencils were, were all light pass and I felt comfortable using them, I would mostly, I think, use them whenever I did a bokeh background. Anything out of focus for the background and then my foreground, I would likely switch over to any of my other pencils. But to be fair, I mean, the Derwent Light Pass, they blend really, really well when you do the, the bokeh background. They're wonderful for that too. So then I go back to why then would I use, like, I don't really have a reason then to use these. Not given the price point and the lack of light vest. Light vestness. I don't know. My grammar is not excellent. And you can get detail, just not as much as other pencils. There are certain things just because it's so waxy. Now these are listed as an oil-based pencil, but in all pencils are a mixture of oil, clay, wax, you know, different, different stuff. They're not all just oil, but it, they were not, they didn't feel like an oil base to me at all, besides some of the colors being as translucent as let's say polychromos. They do not work on sanded paper with powder blender at all. So they definitely have a higher wax content than what works well for that product. So if I were to use this with powder blender and on sanded paper, it would just be for final details where I didn't need to blend out. This didn't really blend. And then here on that paintbrush, this is that touch up texture titanium white mixture I told you about. I've got a video showing you exactly how to use that product if you're interested. Look how I get these nice little details, but the pencils were just not going to give me. I can get a much, much smaller detail here with the paintbrush and painting this on. And remember, again, do not just use white acrylic paint or a gel pen. That is not archival if that's something that you are concerned with. So there is the finished piece. I'm not unhappy with it. And so I was very surprised. At, and again, once I figured out to change my technique, that was important. But once I did that, once I figured out just burnish with these, that was the, that gave me the best results. I really did like the performance of them. They're not my favorite, but I don't dislike them. My biggest issue is they are far too expensive for this company to, to be so kind of shady with their information on how they test for light fastness, how they're treating their customers, not getting back to them. When I asked a legitimate question, and just knowing, you know, people who have done these private light fast tests, because that's all we can go by. We can't trust the company then. So we have to go by individuals who have done this. I wouldn't buy them and I won't buy any of their other, other products anymore. I just, you know, hopefully in the future, they realize that artists, that our professionals have a certain standard that we've got to be held to if we're selling our work. And I really hope that they can step it up and help provide that for us because they were nice to work with and even their, their airbrush paint. I liked their airbrush paint. I won't use it now. I do not trust it. Now that I've gotten more information from them, I'm just, I've, I've got more questions than answers, I think, at this point. Quick minor disclaimer. I talked to somebody else who had bought these pencils years ago before they were making them for the U.S. It's possible the formula changed. From what we were talking about, neither one of us have, we're, we're not close to each other um, in proximity, so I couldn't test her. She can't test mine. But it sounds like they may have changed the formula since she bought hers. I don't know if that's a good or bad thing, but if you bought the pencils years ago, they might be different now than what they were there. We're not really sure. If any of you guys have the old version and then the new version, please let me know if there is any difference. This is speculation. Just it, it sounded what she was describing and what I, I was describing and we work similarly didn't sound like the same pencil. So super curious about that. Let me know in the comments if you have any idea. I'd ask Colbine directly, but we know they're not responding to me anymore. Have you subscribed? If not, I have a handy button right there. It's round, has an orange arrow going towards it. If you click on that, that'll help you to keep up to date with all of my new art videos every single week. Don't forget to click on the bell notification icon because YouTube does not notify most people now when a new video goes up, or you can sign up for my email newsletter, or do all of it, where I send out an email once a week letting you know whatever new videos I had go up and what new art live streams are coming that week.